We're going to devote our energies to sports and gardening, all the cultural pursuits as far as they're concerned. In fact, we're going to put the dooms to sleep. Meanwhile, we dig. Greetings and welcome to The Anadromist. This is Burn Power, your anadromist. I am that person. Yes, I, I accept it. So, uh, today what we're going to do, I'm going to try to do this really in a short period. Just an update on things. And um, one thing I want to do is just kind of give you a personal update. I want to give you kind of an update on the state of things here in Tbilisi, Georgia. I also want to give you uh, a preview of what's coming up on this channel. And also tell you what you're missing on some of my other channels. I do have more than one. So, let's just begin. I'm going to try to do this under 15 minutes. It's impossible. I don't know. For some reason, I start talking and my mouth won't stop. So, okay. Georgia and the pandemic. Well, I was telling people we were about 95% back to normal. It kind of felt like that. But I've since learned to scale it back to about um, 80%. Why? Well, for one thing, still have to wear the masks, not walking down the street. We never got as crazy as I've heard in other places where people are literally outdoors or in their cars wearing masks, which to me is absolutely insane. There was no point during this whole thing in which anybody needed to wear a mask outside unless you were packed with lots and lots of people. No, I'm not going into the, all the mask conspiracy stuff or uh, whatever. It doesn't interest me. We wear masks when we enter stores. Um, uh, you know, when you go into a restaurant, you wear a mask. Just entering and then you sit and you don't need a mask. It's kind of perfunctory at this point and doesn't really matter. But there are still cases here. Uh, I still think there are probably about 200 semi-active cases here. And last I checked, I didn't even look up before I started doing this. The big problem is that there are no tourists to speak of. Uh, a few planes have come in with a few tourists, but the bulk of the tourists, I think about 60% of them, came from Russia. Not a Russian in sight. Uh, also, we got a lot of uh, Middle Eastern, uh, Iranian, Turkish, uh, various countries like that, Azerbaijan, uh, some Armenians, right? Armenians and Georgians don't necessarily get along that well. Anyway, we're not getting any real tourists from those countries, nor are we getting many tourists from Europe, uh, who made up another hefty sum. And we used to get tourists from Asia and all over the world. Lesser Americans, Americans still haven't discovered Georgia yet, much to their, their poverty, I must say. But, um... Anyway, so what that means is the economy has taken a huge hit, as it is around the world. And it's not recovering anytime soon. I've seen stores shutting down. I've seen stores shut down since we came out of lockdown. And you see just more and more empty places. So many little Georgian stores just couldn't keep going. And right now there's not enough economy for some of these stores. A lot of stores were focused towards... Tourism, and there's no one there. So what are you going to do? You, you can't sell anything because you don't have anything. So you're, you're just kind of dead in the water. So it looks like the economy is going to be shot here without tourism until at least next spring. You know, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. So um, anyway, that has some specific effects. One of the effects uh, affects me personally and that is, uh, on the good side, on the plus side, uh, the prices for real estate have been going down. And now I've thought about buying a place here. Right now I'm renting. Uh, you know, it's, it's fairly inexpensive for me to rent. It's like going back to the 1970s or something in American terms. But... Um, I realize I've got from about now until at least December or January that the prices, I mean, they're visibly, I mean, as I'm looking, they're going down. So what that means is I've had to start really considering buying a house now because I suspect 
once the tourists come back in the spring, the prices are going to start going up again for houses because a lot of the housing market was being driven by people from other countries coming in. And also the Airbnb situation, which is obviously collapsed right now. So I've got this window of opportunity and I've got to do something. So what I'm doing is I have a, if you know anything of, through my uh, other videos and my writing, uh, particularly on the Gravity from Above um, website, which ha there's a link below. That's not my YouTube videos, but that's my uh, actual writing page. I talked about how my financial situation essentially collapsed when I got here. And so I decided to start getting my retirement money early. Well. I have managed to uh, save up a little bit of money in the uh, last year or so. Uh, it's not a great deal, but enough to put a down payment on. I can kind of show you a bit here of what the Georgian prices are like. Uh, you can get like a three-bedroom house for probably under $40,000. I mean, you'll see some prices here that uh, talk about, you know, 45000 or whatever. Uh, it's, it's really funny if you look at the Lari amount first, which is in the hundreds of thousands, then look at our amount, uh, because it's, the, our, our dollar has gone up to theirs. But I'm seriously thinking of getting a house as soon as possible. And uh, I'm going to tell you more about that in the near future, because I, you know, need... A bit of help. The, the, if if anyone can help with my uh, down payment, it'll reduce my uh, overall costs, and I'm trying to keep those low because I don't. I mean, if you think I make any money on this, <laughs> but that's another thing we can talk about how to how to get burn more subscribers. So um, basically, what's happened is uh, I've started looking, and I've uh, come with some. You know, I figure I have from now until December to uh, come up with a plan and put some money down. I'm going to start. I've been actively looking and I'm going to start going to some places maybe this week. OK, let's talk about some of my YouTube channels. Um, uh, many of you may know I have a couple of other YouTube channels. So I have George and Crossroads. Now, this is uh, the Anadromist. And right now on The Anadromist, I have 572 followers. I'm trying to get to 1,000 because once I pass that point, I might be able to monetize some of these videos. I, some of these videos, I'm absolutely sure I'll never get monetized because of the subject matter and because of the fact that I use clips from other people. And sometimes I consider it much more important to show you the thing than to make money. So just life. If I get any money from this channel, it's from the lovely people. I don't have Patreons, but I do have people who contribute through PayPal. You could be one of those people. But, uh, and I list them at the end of the video, and I'm very grateful for those people. Without those people, uh, life would have gotten very tough here at a certain point. But uh, things are better now, and I'm really grateful for that help. Um, and I've had about 5,600 hours worth of viewing since the beginning of this channel. Uh, early last year. Now, why don't I have more followers on the channel? Is, people have asked me that. The, some people have said, eh, Burn, you should have lots more followers. Well, you know, I I don't have a Twitter account. I don't have an Instagram account. Um, I have a slight presence on a couple of other platforms that are newer, like I went to ThinkSpot, but that's not generating much. I went to Minds.com. I'm there, but that doesn't generate much. Um... Uh, but uh, basically I have my Facebook page, I have my uh, essay sites, and I have these channels. And so in that little loop, I'm not generating enough of a buzz. I'm not trying to generate a buzz. And so I keep my numbers, my number, I'm not trying to do, now I know exactly what I would do to, uh, if, I, if, if just getting followers was my goal. Here's what I would do, because I've seen it. The, the the videos that I've done the best on, I did a, a video on uh, the movie Joker. That's gotten 
uh, 1,500 views. Not much by YouTube standards, but much more noticed than all my other videos. Uh, I did one on PewDiePie that's, I think, over 800 views now. Another one on The Joker that's 700 or so views. And when I do stuff on those kind of popular uh, topics, I get more views. It's just that simple. So if I just started doing things on subjects that were either timely or popular, um, like, for instance, I just did one on... Uh, digging for truth in the pits of propaganda. And I put the word Portland at the end. Well, that word Portland, because of it's in the news now, gets me a bit of, of uh, a few, probably a few extra hits. But if I really wanted to do it, I would do it on all sorts of other subjects that were just guaranteed to get me some sort of, you know, people going, ooh, he's done that on the subject. I would just do movie reviews. Movie reviews would get me... You know, if I did timely movie reviews, oh, <laughs> there isn't much of a movie world right now, but you get the p picture. If I did timely movie reviews or music reviews, that would get me a lot of subs. And I could do that. I, I know how to do reviews very well. But that's not what I'm on about, obviously. And if you watch my videos, I also don't do things in little nice, neat packages. I mean, my last two videos were about two and a half hours plus each. Which is not like something that you, you know, it's like, what am I trying to do? A master's thesis because I didn't go to college? Yeah, well, I did do a little college. But, you know, the point is, uh, for me, it's it's like, yeah, here's this stuff I have to share with you. What, what do you think of this? So that's one reason why I don't get many followers. But also what I've been doing is I've been very calculated in one way, as I said, said to myself, and you may notice this, particularly if you're uh, you've been around for a while or if you're a new uh, subscriber, uh, once you get to the channel and you realize, oh, there's a few other videos, you start going back into it because none of my videos seem particularly matched to time. So in other words, because I'm not doing timely subjects all the time, it means they're all perennial, which means you can watch them anytime. And that's exactly my goal. So that eventually, I think I got this from Jordan Peterson, because when Jordan Peterson uh, had his moment, he already had all these uh, lectures up online, and suddenly people could all dive into what he had been saying. I mean, because he had a, a web presence for quite a while before he had the big blow-up moment. And so uh, I think that... Uh, not that I'm expecting a blow-up moment, personally, uh, but I'm saying, sitting there saying to myself, well, when people come to the channel, I want them to get something out of it. I want them to not just come here and there just be one video or, you know, some very cool videos that you could watch for a few minutes and go, like, oh, okay, I'm done. I want it to be something, you, it's like you go further and further in and go like, oh, goodness, which is why I started uploading Libri videos and such. So anyway, um, that's what's happening with this channel. I'll tell you what's coming up on it. Um, I do have one on beauty and horror films that I'm definitely going to do. But most important, and the thing everybody has asked me, is where's the rest of the How We Got Here series? Well, it's coming. And that's going to be the next thing is going to be uh, How We Got Here number six, The Origins of the Culture War. And when you see that one, you'll understand why I waited so long. It's because... I know I'm walking straight into it on this one, and nobody's going to be happy right or left. Why? Because it's not, it, it, what's, what I'm not trying to do is propagandize you for the right or the left. I'm trying to get you to use your brain and think. And so, uh, you know, and these are my thoughts. You like them or hate them, I don't care. I just want you to think about these things, and I want you to research them yourself. And that's what's important to me. Um, so the origins of the culture war will be the next video. It may take, uh, you know, I hope to get it by the weekend coming up here the next weekend, but there will be, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12 after that. And I think I will concentrate on those uh, through the end of the year. I hope to get the whole series done by the end of the year. Cause it, you know, what's interesting is of course, the closer it gets to you, the more you start to feel involved in the story. But I really want you, if you haven't, go back to the first one, uh, which is a short introduction, then to the next one, which is in the post-war era. And I talk about why all of this basically, uh, it's like World War II is the psychotic, psychic break with the past. 
which then leads to the 60s, which leads to the punk era, which leads to, well, where we're going now. So I want you to, uh, if you haven't, go back and catch up on those because you're going to need to. It's going to get more hair raising as we go. Um, and I want you to understand why the world you're seeing around you today looks the way it does. I mean, there's everything looks the way it does. If you see a girl with uh, kind of washed out uh, turquoise hair walking down the street, that didn't just come from nowhere. That came from punk rock hair, which then got kind of watered down by grungy uh, early 90s hair, which then turned into a symbol for a certain ideology, which is what it is today for so many people. Uh, it it sim symbolizes I'm with them, not with them. You know, it's just one of those strange things that uh, uh, it, it shows you. Um, anyway, how we got here coming up. More of that. So, then we go to, let's talk about my other channel. Now, my other channel, you may know it as The Anadromous Life. And I did that because I used to only have one channel. This is my first channel. And uh, I have another essay website called The Anadromous Life. You might check it out. Lots of essays going back to 2010 on that site. But... Um, I realized that what when I started this, The Anadromist, a lot of the kind of essay material that I was doing on The Anadromist Life is on this channel. So this really connects to The Anadromist Life essay site. And most of the stuff that was on that other channel uh, connected more to Gravity from Above. It was documents, it was interviews with uh, puppeteers, it was uh, me going to puppet shows, it was also me going to Georgian uh, dances and, and uh, musicians and such. And so what that channel has turned out to be more is a channel dedicated more to performance and theater with the emphasis on puppetry, but also on Georgian cultural institutions. And in fact, let me give you a little bit of a sample of that right now. Interesting stuff. If you think, uh, you well, here's what I would say. More of you need to discover that channel. Why? Uh, maybe you're, you say to yourself, well, I'm not really interested in that sort of, you know, who's interested in puppetry? You should be. And I tell you why in some of my essays here on this channel, uh, video essays, lectures, but uh, some of the interviews that I have with people relate directly back to the kinds of subjects that I discuss here. So, for instance, for me, puppetry is a way to get beyond the over-media-saturated landscape we live in. And I talk to puppeteers, they all get it. That's what's really interesting. And I often ask them, what do you think about puppetry in an age of the media-saturated, soaked, smartphone, screen-infested age we live in? What do you think? And they give really honest answers. And in fact, let me play you 
some of their answers and just some samples from that video that uh, channel right now today in today's world in fact we are in a spiritual crisis there are only two simple possibilities first the world will simply crash and disappear and the world will somehow survive the second possibility but if we want to survive then we have to go back to spiritual uh, life because i'm used to be close to nature used to be this uh, used to be connected with the world and um, I kind of afraid that technologies can take it all away from me. Yeah, that's it. Never thought about this, but yeah, not so much that I can uh, get lost in the technologies, as everything I love can be um, destroyed by it, and it's really sad. I've never thought about this, and then now it's really sad. We have a lack of love just for today. We are just in a very dark period. We live in a very dark period, and this can't happen more darker because this is the peak of the darkness. But the darkest part of the day means that sunrise will come soon. And we are waiting for this sunrise. You should think about going over to that channel and subscribing because it doesn't, I don't have as much stuff that comes down the pike, although I am planning more before the end of the year. But it's important for you, and it will give you other ideas related to the ones I'm doing here. And in a sense, it shows you some of the art that influences me. Um, and just to let you know, there are 851 subscribers there. And almost 15,000 hours and views. That's the bigger channel. This is the small little fry, you know, I've only got 572, although it's, it's gaining quicker. But that's because I'm putting my effort here, and you see my face here. Over there, you don't see my face much, if, if at all. Uh, that's just documents. This is my observations of the world. This, however, is my discussion of things. That's why you see my face and the strange lighting I have today, because I'm just experimenting and Forgive me. I don't care. <laughs> so then there is Georgian Crossroads, which really many of you should discover. Do you know I have a channel based on my life in Georgia? People have said, well, Burn, you know, why are you in Georgia? What are you doing there? What kind of things are you discovering? Well, don't ask me here. Go over there and ask me because that's, uh, you know, it's like the baby channel here. It's only 191 uh, subscribers. Only 403 hours of views. Um, and I haven't really started to ask for any contributors over there yet. Um, at, at the same point on this channel, I was already receiving money from you generous folks out there, to which, I, again, I am so grateful for. But I haven't asked that yet. Because, well, there's one technical thing I want to resolve in, as far as where the payments go. But, <clears throat> but really, if you haven't discovered that channel you should. Because I have, for instance, uh, a series on what life has been like in Georgia under the infection. Uh, I call it Infected Georgia. Uh, and I label it, there's a series called uh, Unexpected Georgia, and another one called Unexpected Tbilisi, the, the capital city where I live, um, and other subjects. And in a way, I'm exploring things in Georgia that relate directly to the anadromous life. And um, if you think somehow, they're not just travel videos. They're, uh, they, I mean, some are, but some of them are also meditations upon the nature of life in the 21st century, using Georgia as a lens. I would highly suggest going over to that channel, giving it a look, watching a few videos, 
and um, just basically subscribing and joining up. I need you over there. I need I need to get my numbers over the, over there. Here's what I see in the future. I think that channel will become the biggest one once travel starts again. Why? Travel vi channels do very, very well. Although I didn't start that as a travel channel. I started that because I had so many Georgian observations that I didn't want to clog up this channel with them. So you should go over to Georgian Crossroads. And um, uh, well, that about does it. Did I? How did I do on time? I probably went over. I don't you know what? Well, anyway, I wanted to thank you for everything you folks have done f for me. Um, I, I'm always humbled by the questions you ask. You so far, you guys have been really, really intelligent. Um, and I'm not just saying that. I mean, when I see the kinds of questions people are asking in comments, I'm really uh, humbled and amazed that I'm getting that. Uh, and I don't get many uh, stupid questions. Not much spam. You know, it might come. And uh, But right now, this is your chance to interact with me more. If the channel does get big for some reason, that'll, it'll be more difficult. So I appreciate your being here. Um, anyway, and, and do you have any thoughts about what the channel should be like? I mean, you know, with things you wish I should do more. I am going to attempt a live stream at some point in the near future. Let's put it to you this way. Once we hit a thousand subscribers on this channel, I will do a live stream. So share my videos. That's something you can do. Um, if you haven't uh, subscribed, what are you doing watching this? Subscribe. <laughs> you know, uh, no. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Um, if you feel like uh, what I'm doing is something you'd like to support, use PayPal, uh, either a one-time gift or a, uh, a monthly contribution. See the link below in the description section and use that. And here's the point. If you donate, I'm going to say right now, if you donate $5 or more a month, I will send you extra material, uh, audio material of lectures and things I've done. Uh, and I've got some special stuff coming up on that for people who've already been doing it for a year. Help me to get further uh, with this. Uh, share the video around. I realize, you know, I probably don't, I'm not connected to anyone who has extreme reaches all over the, the uh, you know, the technosphere. And, um, yeah, that's fine. I just want to make sure that the people who are watching are getting something out of it. So I appreciate everything that uh, you are doing by watching, by spending the time listening to me, by contributing, by subscribing, by sharing, by thinking with me on these things. And I will see you again very soon. And remember, the word anadromous means it's about the fish that swim against the stream. Swim against the stream. Just don't follow the propaganda of the times, left or right. Think about things. You know, it's that's up to you. So, take care from Tbilisi, Georgia. And uh, as we say here, droibit, which means basically I'll see you later. But what it really means is temporarily. Well, we'll just be away from each other temporarily. And look out for... Coming, uh, hopefully this coming weekend, try to get it out for a Sunday uh, show. Look out for how we got here, number six. And pray that the toes that I step on are the right toes. <laughs> I'll see you then. A people without history is not redeemed from time. For history is a pattern of timeless moments.